So moving up in the Nginx video series, we reach to the basic authentication module inside Nginx in its free version. So that's what we're going to see in this video. If you want to learn more, sit with me. Hello, what's up guys, Medium Guy here and welcome to the next video in the Nginx video series where I try to show you guys about all the cool features that Nginx provides in its open source version things like load balancing, rate limiting, caching and things like that also if you want to learn more about those features I've got all the videos in the Nginx playlist for which you can find the link down in the description section so in this specific video we're going to see about the basic authentication module that also comes with the free version of nginx so we're going to see how to enable it on a location block also integrating it with the ip restrictions policies so without any delay let's get down to work so in a total overview what is going to happen in this video is that as always there is a client over here which makes a request to a protected resource that is behind the nginx web server so basically that resource can be anything like for example a backend service that will be then proxied by the nginx web server or a specific file or a group of files and every other resource that can be exposed from the nginx web server so nginx receives that request it then asks for the username and password from the client then the client will be prompt with a username and password and basically the client will then send the username and password to nginx and nginx will decide if the username and password is correct or not and if it is correct it will then return the requested resource and if it is not correct it will again ask for the username and password so the thing that happens over here the client is not requesting to the resource directly but through the nginx itself so the reason that we try to implement a authentication in nginx level can be many different reasons so one of the most commons will be that the service behind nginx has not an authentication system integrated inside it or another reason for this is that we can have the same authentication service for many services behind nginx so the client will be able to access many resources with the same username and password that is authenticated in nginx level over here and not the services behind it so now that we have the total overview of the thing that is going to happen in this video next i'll move to the official documentations for the basic authentication module on nginx website so as it says the nginx http auth basic module allows limiting the access to resources by validating the username and password using the http basic authentication protocol so over here we can see a very basic example configuration and over here we have the directives that we can configure this module so the context can be on the http block the server block and also the location block so basically by your needs and by your setup you have to actually configure this module in these three levels so basically this module will be actually looking for a file that holds the username and passwords that are valid to pass through the basic authentication module on nginx level so with that in mind i'll move to the vs code over here where i've got the files and configurations to demonstrate this module in nginx so as you can see in the basic auth directory in nginx directory i've got all these files which i'll put all the files and configurations in my github repository for which you can find the link also in the description section down below so as you can see over here i've got a docker compose file which holds two services one being the echo server which will act as the upstream server that will be proxied from the nginx if the basic authentication is passed so basically this echo server is a node server which basically echoes whatever request that it receives 
and over here I've got the Nginx that is using the latest Nginx official image and it has two volumes that is mounted to it one being the dot slash nginx.com file which holds all the configuration files that we'll see in a moment to slash etc nginx nginx.com file inside the container which is actually the root configuration file that nginx will try to load its configurations from and the other the dot slash hc password file which will hold the username and passwords that will be valid to make requests to protected resources so i've mapped this file to slash hc password to inside the container and this path will be the exact path that will configure nginx to look for the password files inside the container and on the port section i've got a port that is mapped to exactly same port inside the container which is exactly the same port that i'll configure nginx to be listening on so it'll be accessible from the outside network so over here on the nginx.com file as you can see i've got an http block a server block inside it and the listen directive that will tell nginx to listen on the exact same port that is mapped to outside the container as we saw in the docker compose file so i've got a location block which is a slash public and it is a proxy pass to http echo server which is the service name of the echo server that i defined inside the docker compose file so basically because these are in the exact same docker compose file the two containers will actually share the same network so basically they'll be able to see each other through their service names also over here i've got another location block which is a slash private and actually it has the basic authentication enabled and by using the auth basic user file and passing in the exact same path for the hd password file we are telling the nginx to look for the username and passwords file in this exact provided location so again if the authentication is met the request will then be proxied to the echo server also so with this configuration i'll switch to the terminal i'll hit ls to make sure i'm in the exact same directory that i have my configuration files so by only saying docker compose up dash d to run in detached mode as we can see the docker compose will create a network and both the containers attaching to that created network so actually this is the reason that they can see each other through their service names so if i say docker compose ps i can see that my both containers are created and as we can see their state is up and for the nginx service we can see that the exact same port that i defined in the docker compose file is map to the same port inside the container so basically right now if i go to localhost on port 9999 i should be able to access the nginx that is running as a container so if i say docker compose logs dash f to follow the logs and dash dash tail to grab the latest 100 lines i'll hit enter and as a result i can see the logs that are outputted from the both containers that are created by this docker compose file so if i move to the browser go to my laptop's ip address on port 9999 you can see that i can make a connection to nginx service so if i go to slash public as you can see the request is proxy to the echo server without prompting me to fill in any username and password but if i go to the slash private as you can see it is requesting for a username and password so right now we don't have any valid username and password so we won't be able to authenticate ourselves so right now let's try to generate some usernames and passwords so we'll be able to authenticate through this slash private path so if we go to the official documentation as it's saying the passwords file will only support the following over here the encrypted values with the crypt function which can be generated using the ht password utility or the openssl password command so basically i'm going to use the openssl command to generate my passwords 
So I'll grab this command over here, move to the terminal, create a new terminal, and if I paste it, I'll hit enter. I'll pass in the pass as the password. I'll retype it. And as you can see, it generates a random string, which is the hashed value for the pass that I just inputted. So I'll copy this. I'll move to the HT password file. I'll define user colon the created password. Also, I'll try to generate another one. Again, I'll grab this and actually define it on the second line. So I'll save this file. So basically the syntax for the passwords file is like this that we can see over here. The username colon password and it can hold a colon comment at the end of it. So basically because the HT password file is mounted inside the container and by changing the file on my host machine also the mapped file inside the container will be changed. I am expecting this to work without restarting the nginx service so let's try this and move to the browser let's hit a refresh over here and passing the user and pass hit enter and as you can see it is working as a char so basically the thing that happened over here is that i made a request to a protected resource nginx detected that it is protected and asks for the username and password then i'll send the username and password and nginx try to validate it through the she password file and if it matched any then it'll just proxy pass the request to echo server and as a result i'll see the response for my request so as the last point i'm going to demonstrate how to integrate the basic authentication with the ip restriction module so as you can see over here i am defining the ip address range for the allow list and denying all other ip ranges so basically any ip addresses in this ip range will be able to make requests to this location block and all other ip addresses will simply be denied so over here by passing the satisfied directive and passing the any as the value nginx will validate either the ip address or the basic authentication but as we pass the all as the value nginx will expect the request to be in this ip range over here and also it pass the basic authentication based on this file over here so i'll set it to any for now hit save go to the terminal i'll hit ctrl c and by saying nginx s reload i'll send the reload signal to nginx service so without restarting the container i'll be able to reload the configurations in the nginx container so i'll move to the browser try to make another request now as you can see it doesn't prompt me with a username and password because my ip range is in the exact same defined load ip ranges but if i go back to the configuration file change this to all i'll hit save and if i reload the nginx again and try to make a request you can see that it will both validate my ip address and also ask for the username and password for the basic authentication so if I say user and pass as the password, I'll hit enter and you can see that I get the response for my requests. So that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new in this one. If you have any questions, any recommendations, of course, go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below. Just don't forget to watch other videos in this video series where you can learn about all other cool features that are available in Nginx's open source version. And lastly, if you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help grow the channel and motivate me to create more free videos like this. So with that, I hope to see you in the next video.